Now these are fairly small. This one was from the supermarket. It weighs almost as much as those three. But normally in the supermarket, when you buy them, they'll be very clean. This one has like a wax on it, kind of like the wax coating that they put on apples. The ones from the farm stand here, these were very dirty. Now I cleaned them a lot, but I will give them one more uh, once over of a good cleaning. The reason you want to do this is because the acorn squash skin is edible. Acorn squash is one of the squash varieties that you can eat the skin. There's a couple other. Butternut squash, you don't want to eat the skin. And obviously you'll, you'll kind of figure that out when you use a butternut squash because it's very, very tough skin, kind of hard to peel. We're not doing butternut, we're doing acorn today and this is completely edible. Really, really scratch, get all the dirt off of it. All right, so clean them really well. That's what I'm gonna do right now. First time I ever had acorn squash was in a restaurant when I was 20 or maybe maybe 18. We never had it growing up. My grandmother never made it. My mother never made these. Supposedly very easy to grow and very common and they're like easy for farmers to grow. They're not expensive. First place I ever had it, they did a seafood risotto for it and they stuffed it. Cut the end off, end off, and you get, you know, you basically turn them into halves and then you can stuff them with anything. I have a video, it's one of my earliest videos, it's stuffed with apples and sweet Italian sausage and Pecorino Romano cheese. It's just a good stuffing. There's a million ways you can stuff these. These are really clean. I probably have three, maybe four pounds of uh, acorn squash here. Now that the end is cut off, now you can lay it flat and it's, you're not in danger when you're cutting it of it rocking or anything like that. No matter which way you cut them, you want to start them like this. Make sure you have a sharp knife because if you don't, you're not going to be able to cut through that. I'm going to take a spoon and just scoop out all the seeds and all this pulp. Spoon is kind of the best thing to do and you can really use some force with your hand and you can just kind of get it all out right away. This is just a piece of parchment paper to make it easier so there's no, so the cutting board doesn't get all messy. These clean very easily because they're basically just a hole right here and you can really use a spoon to use a lot of force. I was using the butternut squash for the baked pasta recipe that I did with it with the butternut squash sauce and that one, those were a little harder to remove. You'll see a lot of recipe like sites and stuff will say to microwave these to, to cut them and to, to help you. You can do that. If you have a sharp knife, you really don't have to. Same thing, if you have a sharp peeler, like, because with butternut, you, butternut squash, you uh, have to peel it. All six halves are done, and just see how easy that is now to clean up? See these lines? Like that. It gets a little dangerous here, maybe, when with two of them right at the end. Just leave it. It's fine. It doesn't matter. That's what I'm going to do. The other half are going to be rings. So instead of cutting this way, we're going to cut them this way. If you want to ensure that everything's going to cook roughly at the same rate, try to cut the rings to the same thickness that you cut the little boats. And I know I said it like 10 times, make sure you have a sharp knife. This is, this is an ultra sharp knife I have right here and these. I have the oven set to 400 degrees. You can like do half and half right now. And I'll show you, I have two cutting, I have two uh, baking trays. So I'll keep, I'll keep the moons on one side and uh, call them uh, half circles on the other side. So I'm putting this all in here. And remember, yeah, your, your acorn squash are really clean because you're gonna eat the skin. So, you know, you did a good job, you cleaned them. I'm gonna put some olive oil. Maybe two tablespoons, not so much. Maybe three tablespoons. About a teaspoon of uh, kosher salt. And about a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Toss this all together. If you think you need more oil at this point, put more oil on, I know this is good. And just put them on your baking tray. 
You line the rings up face down, one face down, and then halfway through, we'll turn them over. A little bit more salt and pepper. Same thing, one side and then we'll flip them halfway through. I'm gonna put both sheets in there for 20 minutes, or actually 40 minutes total, but at the 20 minute mark, we'll flip them over uh, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. At about 20 minutes, you can flip them. You can see there'll be a little bit, there'll be a little bit of color then on them. I think it's the easiest just to use a fork to do it. See, that's good color on that one. And then you can get them back in the oven for another 20 to 25. You wanna make sure they're really fork tender. Hazelnuts are a great value at Trader Joe's. That's where I normally buy them. I know you have a Trader Joe's near you. Everybody in the country does. I have maybe a half a cup here, maybe three quarter cup. Just use a sharp knife or whatever and you can just kind of chop them. All right, so that's pretty good. Yeah, what, maybe one or two of them are too, they're too big. Just push it off to the side and we're gonna just toast these hazelnuts a little bit. Very low heat, you don't wanna burn them. Maybe use a little bigger pan than that, but uh, just toast them and it might take five minutes. Just keep your heat really low. Toasting the hazelnuts is just gonna just make them taste better. Bring out a little bit more flavor. Uh, you know, I toast them, um, toast pine nuts for, for brajol. And for other times when I'm using pine nuts. Whenever I think of hazelnuts, I always think of uh, Nutella or like kind of dessert in general. So while these hazelnuts are toasting, I'm gonna take out the acorn squash. We wanna let them sit for like 10 minutes. Got our half moons and we have the rings and they're super fork tender. Make sure you do that. They went about 45, 50 minutes. My hazelnuts are nice and toasted. I can smell them. And I'm just gonna put them off to the side. Same pan or take another pan if you want. Just make sure you dry it off really well because we're gonna put oil in here. Just a touch of olive oil, we're gonna be, we're gonna fry sage leaves now. This is gonna be for the other type that we're doing. Don't worry, it's all gonna come together at the end. Let this heat up. This is the toasted hazelnuts. These are gonna be with the regatta and the honey. And then we're gonna fry up sage leaves now and we're gonna mix that with shaved Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. Once your oil gets up to temp, and I'll show you how, and then you're gonna put your sage leaves in and put them right here on this. So you take the back of a wooden spoon and once it starts bubbling like it is, then you're good to fry. I'm gonna do about half, maybe half of them at a time, maybe a third of them. Okay, they're gonna take like a few seconds and you just take them right out, just like that. When they come right out of the oil, you can put a little bit of salt on them too. Now the best way to tell if the acorn squash is done is to take a piece, and I just did already. That is so good. That is, it's sweet. Salt and pepper, olive oil, perfect. They're, they're ready to go. We have the rings over here, and we have the half moons over here. They, they've been out for about 10 or 15 minutes, so they're cool enough to touch. Even this pan is cool enough for me to touch now. I'm gonna turn all the half moons, and you can see like the color difference. See how much more color I got on this side than that side? And that's totally fine. It's it's really nice and caramelized on one side. It's hard to get them both exactly the same, but you know, you saw you saw me we we well not we, I ate one and they're perfect. And I like the moon shape here 
because it's gonna it's gonna be able to hold the regatta in there. These ones, the rings, they're just good like that with just salt, pepper, and olive oil, but we're gonna make them better. Part of the reason why you wanna wait 10 or 15 minutes before you do this is so that you can touch them. But also the regatta, if you put it on right away, when, it, when they're super hot, it's all gonna just melt and kind of spill off. We'll wait even more for that and we'll do the other one first. So we're gonna shave Parmesan cheese. And this is, this is Parmigiano Reggiano. You can also use just like good domestic Parmesan cheese or Grana Padano. You can even use Pecorino here, but Pecorino kind of tends to overpower it. We got some nice pieces. We, each, we got like big pieces. Each person can kind of grab one and you can put it on the piece. You can almost take a sage leaf too and do it. That's a real simple one. Let's do number two. I have regatta here. This is Palio. You can use, uh, what do I have in the fridge? I All right, I have Trader Joe's in the fridge and uh, Calabro, which uh, came from Whole Foods. So anything's fine. You could probably even use mascarpone here. Just a little bit inside. Take your hazelnuts and kind of try to like smush them on there. And it's obviously way too many hazelnuts that I, that I roasted, but it'll be okay. I'll use them for something else. Man, this looks so good, so good. And then grab your little honey thingamajig and then get it on there. You don't need a lot of the honey. You just, this thing kind of does the work for you. And there you go. That's acorn squash two ways. This is regatta, toasted hazelnuts, and honey. And this is rings with shaved Parmigiano Reggiano cheese and fried sage leaves. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time.